welcome to Linda Faith Speaks Encourage Yourself Radio Show. It's time to discover you. I'm bringing awareness to what God has for you and how you can walk out any issue in your life. Each week, I will introduce you to a life filled with purpose and how that purpose is being used to glorify God, prescribing tips, tools, and resources on how you can encourage yourself. So now, let's walk by faith and not by sight. Enjoy. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Encourage Yourself series show. My name is Chandra Nicole Gore, and I am a Lens of Faith. Tonight, I'm interviewing one of my sisters. So happy to finally have caught up with her. She is blessed and highly favored and moving and grooving in her purpose path journey. Welcome to the show, Natasha. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You know, I've been watching you for quite some time. And even when I came down to Arkansas, I was like, this is one to watch right here. This is one to watch right here. And you were so passionate about what it is that you wanted to do. And I'm so glad, so glad that you are walking in your purpose driven life. And it, it, feels real good doesn't it it does it feels amazing all right tiwana hi tiwana line today god bless you sis thanks for joining please share the show out um natasha the show is being shared to your page right okay. now so when you see it pop up you can um just go ahead and um uh, approve it Okay. Well, I want to thank you all once again for tuning in. Please like and share the this broadcast out. Let me tell you a little bit about Natasha Houston. She is a coach, a business coach, motivational speaker, public speaker, life coach, author, certified personal trainer, military veteran. She has a BA in sociology, a MS, a master's degree in organizational leadership. She's a personal trainer, which is NASM certified facilitator, training and development manager, work and family life consultant, and all around health and wellness coach. God bless you, sis. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me. It's a blessing that, that you even, you know, I kind of honored that you asked me to come. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, sis, let's just jump right on into this interview. I'd like let's you go. to share your testimony with the listening audience. All right, my testimony. Where do I begin? <laughs> um, so, I got into wellness. Um, honestly, I would say that it, 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 it kind of started when, um, let me see, when did it start? Take us back to 2011. 2011. Mm -hmm. When I got out of the military. Yes. So um, I separated from uh, active duty um, from the Air Force, November 28, 2011. Very, 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 very hard day. <laughs> I was uh, medically discharged. Um, I uh, messed up my knee, which rippled effect into multiple injuries. Um, I have no cartilage in my right knee at all. Uh, shifted my right pelvic bone and ended up developing scoliosis in my lower spine. I had three split discs in the lower. Um, I can't remember what the S and the T's, which ones it is, but I just know it's in my lower spine. Um, and then I have a tendonitis in my glutes, which caused weakness in both of my hips, at bursitis. In both, it's more severe on the right side. So every now and then, and my clients know when I call them and tell them I can't get out the bed, it's because it's extra swollen on the right side. Um, I have arthritis in both my hands and my feet, uh, carpal tunnel, um, pretty bad. Um, and behind all of that, because I was only 28 when all this happened, I, I got severely depressed. Um, I got uh, depression and anxiety as well on top of all of that. And uh, so it was, it was, it was, it was quite a challenge. Um, so I got out and just had to figure things out because um, I didn't plan on getting out. I planned on serving 20 years. You know what I'm saying? So I had only had six years of service. Um, this is why they say when, you, when you're working on something, make sure you got a backup plan because you just never, ever know. <laughs> you never know. Anyway, my bad. I'm sorry. So, um, so I went on ahead and I signed up for college. I went to school full time. 
Um, but I was, it, it was, it, the, the struggle bus was real. It was real. Um, but I, I went to school full time. I was, I took, took on like four or five classes at one time. Cause I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Cause I wasn't ready. I'm not prepared. You know what I mean? And, and I love my family. My family knows them and they know when I tell the story, I'm not being shaped for, I'm just telling my, walking in my truth. I'm telling my truth. Um, but you know, I went to the military to run away from home. And so, you know, because I had to leave the military, I didn't have nowhere to go. So, you know, I had to kind of land on my feet and, you know, so I worked and, you know what I mean? I, I went to school full time and disability finally kicked in and applied for unemployment. I just had to really, really figure it out right then. You know what I mean? Like I, I didn't really have time to figure it out. Cause like I said, it, it all happened so fast. Um, but I met with the uh, physical therapist because um, the, my pains were so severe and I had been gaining weight like crazy since I had gotten out of the military. You know, I was depressed. And then I had been overseas the entire time uh, that I was in service. So when I got back stage, we talking about real McDonald's. We talking about fat back. We talking about grits. We talking about some pork chop. I ain't had this stuff in so long. I was like, oh God, this is amazing. You know what I mean? So, you know, and then and then I made the decision to quit smoking because the doctor had advised me that, you know, I was smoking two packs of cigarettes per day and I was a heavy drinker. And so the doctor had advised me that, you know, my um my joints were dehydrated. Like there were there was no fluid in my joints because I had, you know, smoking dehydrates your body, but I smoked so much that you know i had dehydrated my bones real bad and they were like the arthritis is going to be 10 times worse just based on the fact that you're smoking the way that you smoke you need to consider quitting you know what i mean so um i had to be self-sufficient in some kind of way in saying you know okay what can i do to make things better and so i went on ahead and i quit smoking i went completely cold turkey um and then i got connected with a, a physical therapist because they extended my disability um i'm sorry they extended my medical for six months so I went and saw a, um, hey, Lamora. I went and saw a physical therapist and she was extremely aggressive. And the one thing that she told me was she said that you got to push, you got to push through the pain. You got to push through the pain. And I used to leave physical therapy crying because everything hurt. Everything was swollen. It was just, I mean, it was just insane. And so, um, and so she, um, but she told me, she was like, you got to push through the pain. Once we get, get, you know, we, not only do we have to try to strengthen the right. muscle, but we have to gain muscle on, you know, we have to constantly, you know, try to gain strength in those areas. So that way that they support the fractured, the, the frail, the broken, the, the strained bones, you know what I mean? So when you strengthen the muscles around that, that's that, you know what I mean? You, you, you have that support back. So right. not a hundred percent because the bones are still injured that, that, that's not going to change. But as long as you maintain strength in those muscles, you can support the injury. So a lot of people wonder nowadays, like, you don't look disabled. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the thing is, is my muscles are, are, are strong. You know what I mean? So they support, you know, uh, areas where I'm injured. So anyway, um, so she, she, but she taught me all of that. She's like, all you're doing is working out. I want you to think about that. All you're doing is working out. Everything I'm showing you are things that you can do in the gym. These are things that you can do on your own. So once you're, when you're done with me, I want you to be paying attention. I want you to be learning everything that I'm teaching you because when we're done, you need to keep this going. And every time that you stop, you, 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 you're gonna feel your pain again. You know what I mean? Your muscles are gonna get weak. And the only thing that's gonna be, you know what I mean? Is you're just gonna be on your bones. And so, uh, my, like I said, my right knee, I'm bone on bone. So if I ain't got no quad support there, uh, everything hurts it. You know what I'm saying? Gotta hurt. That's, I know that gotta hurt. Especially when it rain, when it's cold outside. <laughs> Woo! But anyway, so, so ultimately, you went from being medically retired and facing the challenges of your medical conditions. Mm -hmm. Take us through. Okay, after therapy, what happened after then? So after therapy, um, after therapy, I got married and I moved to Hawaii, and um. I wasn't really, and this happens a lot with women. I'm just, again, telling my truth. Um, this happens a lot with women, not all, I'm saying some, you know, a lot of times though, where we are trying to be the good wife and, you know, trying to, um, I'll say, conform to what we think will make the husband happy. Um, and a lot of times, you know, we, I watered myself down a lot, you know what I mean? Because I've always been a dreamer. I always had ambition, but I didn't think that, um, you know, that fit into the box of what I was supposed to do as a wife. So, you know, I, I worked, 
I um, I volunteered in the community. Those things never changed. I was still going to school full time. By this time, I think I was working on my master's degree. Um, and uh, but I, I wasn't sure what I was supposed to be doing. I kind of felt a little lost. I kind of felt a little dark. Um, and some things had happened, you know, not really happened, but there was a lot of unhappiness even before I got married. So, um, you know, even once, even after marriage, um, I was still sitting in a little bit of a dark place because I just didn't know, I didn't feel like I was doing enough. And, and honestly, I wasn't, I was doing everything else to fulfill a void that, you know, wasn't being fulfilled and it wasn't doing nothing but causing me like the darkness. Now I, I have, a, um, it, which, which is now adult ADHD and so um can't sit still brain doesn't turn off we're always busy and um these glasses are getting on my nerves um but <laughs> but they um I, I i just stayed busy you know what i mean because i just I didn't, I didn't know what i was supposed to be doing so i just stayed busy made sure my house was clean made sure you know food was cooked um and and i stayed busy i knew being in the community was something that i love to do but i just didn't know exactly where I fit in, you know what I mean? So I was just doing some of everything, um, starting things and just overwhelming myself. And so um, I got to the point to where I, I had, I, I stopped working out cause I was, I was getting too busy. So I stopped working out and then all of a sudden my injuries, I could feel them. Right. I could feel them. And then, you know, at least the pain. <laughs> I could feel them. And so anyway, um, a couple of other things that had happened that caused me to fall deeper into a depression. Um, it, it put my marriage in. Um, it, it's a lot. The, the marriage part is a long story, but either way, my marriage got rocky and, you know, it, it days got darker. And I just kind of felt like I didn't know I couldn't keep everything together. I couldn't keep my mind together. My, You know, everything just felt like it was falling apart. And I couldn't understand why. You know what I mean? Because I was able, I, I, I had money. I was comfortable. All my bills were paid. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm in college. I'm married. Um, well, I didn't have nothing to be unhappy about. You know what I mean? And so beside the fact that, you know, every now and then I had physical pain and I, I wasn't understanding what, what I was so unhappy about. And the truth was, was I wasn't walking in my truth. I wasn't being myself. I wasn't, you know what I mean? I, I had completely watered myself down. Um, and I was so focused on making my husband happy that I wasn't focused on what I needed to do for me. You know what I mean? And we do have the capability of still, you know, keeping up our household, but still walking in purpose. You know, once we figure out what that is, yes. at the time, I just didn't know what that was. You know what I mean? And so I, I, I was always frustrated and, um, you know, it just, it, it just got worse. And so I had so much in me that I wanted to do. And just being honest again, my husband and I were not on the same page. Um, I felt a book being birthed in me. I felt a business being birthed in me, but you know, it wasn't. It didn't it didn't fit our world. You know what I mean? And so it was like, okay, so you know, put it on the back burner, and you know, just keep walking and, and being the good wife. And all it did was just make things worse. And you know what I mean? I just felt like everything that I wanted or was attempting to walk in, trying to be myself, kept getting, you know what I mean, pushed down. And, and I was getting more and more frustrated. And, you know, that, and so that's that's how the marriage broke. Um, with that, of course, I'm still not working out. Um, and I ended up doubling the weight. Uh, so when I got out of the service, I was 130 pounds. Mm -hmm. And when I got first got out of the military, I gained maybe 30 pounds, 30, 40 pounds. And I got down, uh, you know, 20, 20 pounds or so. So I, I, so I got up to like 165. I got down to like 150, 155. Got married, moved, moved to Hawaii. And then all that stuff happened. And I got all the way up to 190, 196. I can't imagine it. I can't imagine it. 196, 198. I, I, I know I was almost 200. You I know, and, and yeah. Ooh, yeah. Let me ask you this, sis. You know, Oftentimes, uh, just as you said, people that lack purpose, they, they're constantly bored, they're dissatisfied, they feel empty, they're frustrated, they have a lot of anxiety, and they, they just overall live life day by day, right? Yeah, zombies. Or basically just do whatever they feel like can please them in the moment. Right, right. So... I want you to tell the listening audience how you encouraged yourself from the moment of you medically retiring and you face depression. What did you do yourself 
to encourage yourself through that journey because you went through a journey. You just mm -hmm. took us through that journey. But I want to know what did you do to to speak any form of positivity into yourself? Uh, okay, here goes the, the hard part. <laughs> Um, I hit, I, I, I think at this point I had hit rock bottom and, um, and I say that because at this point I was ready to, I kept asking God to, to help me figure out why I was alive. Um, what was my reason for living? Why am I here? You know, I was asking those type of questions and I was embarrassed to kind of talk about that because I didn't want to feel weak. I didn't want to seem weak. You know what I mean? Black women are known to be strong. You know what I mean? And I just, I didn't want to seem weak. So I, I never, I never talked to anybody about it. I just, you know, kept it to myself and I prayed about it. And I just wanted to know, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just didn't understand what am I here for? You know what I mean? My childhood was traumatic, you know, I, and, and I, I went away and went to the military and tried to make a life out of that. And that failed. You know what I mean? Then I got out of the military. I accomplished two degrees and then I, um, uh, well, well that, right, let me stop you right there. We're not gonna say that it failed because you know. Well, no, no, no. That, that's how I felt in the moment. Yeah. I apologize. Let me say that uh, because you know what, God created you for such a time as this. Absolutely. Had you not medically retired, mm -hmm. would you have birthed all that you have birthed? Probably not. You know, because yeah. you're changing lives. Right, right. Daily, I've watched you doing your junkyard fitness, changing lives. Mm -hmm. So who's to say that this this is a part of your purpose? You know, I always said I was made to be a soldier, right? Mm -hmm. But being in the military put me in a box. Right, now right. I can reach more people being out of the military. I can reach way more people because Absolutely. I'm not confined to a box right. called the United States Army. Right, right. I am now able to reach people globally, mm -hmm. you know, without having some form of stuff tied to me you know right. what i'm saying and god says look i you a soldier for me now and mm. now you gonna reach who i need you to reach yeah you know so that's how i feel about you you know sometimes we have our minds set on something because we like it we right. love it right we want more of it because we're good at it right yeah. we feel yeah. like we're good as service men and women you mm -hmm. know but your purpose frees you right right it frees you and it, it it caused um a happiness that you can't get like no other i, I don't know I, i'm experiencing I very happiness right now I, i've never had it before when yeah you right a true, authentic purpose it's like a light turns on and you're absolutely. like this been all my life absolutely know? absolutely <laughs> and, and and i know that's where the darkness came from i wasn't in purpose you know what i mean i couldn't figure out why i was here so I, I i let me let me rephrase at the time i felt like i had failed a lot you know what i mean i failed so much in my life but it, and so and that is why i came to the point where i was just like why am i here like you know what i mean it, it I, I would rather tomorrow morning if you just didn't even wake me up I would say that, you know what I mean? Like literally because I was so exhausted emotionally, mentally, and I felt like I was fighting a battle that that, that I wasn't going to ever win. You know what I mean? And so, But anyway, um, I, I, in choosing to live, I knew that I had to figure out, you know what I mean? What, what, am, I, what, am, I, what, 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 what am I supposed to be doing? So, you know, I, I kind of took a step back. And um, I, when I say take a step back, I mean, spiritually, I took a step back. And instead of taking on the guy that everybody taught me who he was, I kind of like detoxed that and I learned him for myself. Woo, come on now. As I started learning him for myself, come I started, on. you know, healing myself. You know what I mean? And just started um, my sister. I'll never forget the conversation that we had. And I was just, you know, venting and woe is me. And I say woe is me because there were so many solutions that I was that was coming out of my mouth and I hadn't realized that, you know, and she was like, what has you so sad? And I'm like, I feel ugly. I feel horrible. I feel unattractive. And she was like, well, if you think about it, you know, when you wake up in the morning, all you do is just roll out the bed and you know what I mean? You 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 jump in the shower real quick and you throw some clothes on real quick. You grab, you grab the first thing you see, which is some T-shirts and you know what I mean? And, and, and some sweatpants. You slide on, you know, some, some shoes, some tennis shoes, and you head out the door. You know what I mean? You might not take your scarf off. You know what I'm saying? And so she was like, for one week, I dare you to 
put on makeup. And, and although I wear makeup now, I, I wouldn't wear makeup then. You know what I mean? And so she was like, I dare you. You know what I mean? Take a little time to do your hair. Take a little time, put on some makeup just for one week. Just for one week. And, and, then, and then tell me how you feel. And so I, che- I did it. I woke up an hour. And I am not a morning person. I woke up an hour early. And um, and I did. And I tell you, I, I didn't want to go home. I wanted to go around, walk, walk at the mall. I was like, I feel cute today. I want to go walk. You know what I mean? So it, it does make you feel different. I noticed I was walking a little different. You know, my confidence was back. And you know what I mean? It, it, it was just... It was just completely different. So I'm like, okay, so I, I need a different type of self, self-care. I need I need to take self-care a little more serious. And so not only, you know, when I when I was putting on the cute clothes, at the belly was doing some things. You know what I mean? And, and so everybody was doing some things and I was walking and I was like, this doesn't feel good. I don't like this. So you know, then so I was like, you know, let me. Let me let me let me get back in the gym. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm still pain. My feet were swelling. My ankles were always swollen. My my hands would get tight, and they would just, uh, you know what I mean? Until arthritis is doing whatever it needed to do. And so I was like, you know, let me get back in the gym and, and figure some things out. So I I went ham. I went ham because of course once I made the decision to divorce my my husband, lots and lots of anger, lots of angry days, lots of frustration, and so. Then the gym became like my therapy, you know what I mean? So then I started going to the gym and eventually I was like throwing weights around, you know what I mean? Just to, you know what I mean? That that was my therapy. And so um, before I knew it, within six weeks, I had lost 50, 50, 50 pounds. Yeah. I lost a lot of weight, but you know, it was, I was doing two a day. I was running every day. I was, you know, so in the gym. So it's safe to say that you basically just engaged yourself in living a healthier lifestyle. Yeah, I did. To yeah. help encourage yourself, mind, body, and soul. It gave, it gave me something to focus on. It gave yeah. me something to focus on. And because I was in search for me, in search of me, looking for me, and trying to figure out what God wanted from me, yes. that's what I, but, but what I had not realized is the entire time that I had started my fitness journey way back in Hawaii, um, people were following me then and I, I wasn't paying attention. You know what I'm saying? And so I would just get on there and be like, y'all, it's five o'clock in the morning. I'm going to go run these miles. You know what I mean? But people saw me change and I, and I didn't pay that any attention. And the next thing you know, I was getting inboxes from people saying, thank you so much. You changed my life. I lost 50 pounds. Thank you. I would run with you in the morning. And I'm like, why you ain't say nothing? I needed your encouragement. But people were... They was up working with me. They was up, you know, and I didn't even know it. And so I, you never know who's following you. You never know. I started this very journey and mm-hmm. didn't know that people were even paying me no attention because I'm looking at the numbers like, oh, only two people joined. Only this when actuality, a lot of more people were watching and following. Right. That's why it's, it, it, it's very important that we watch what we're doing. You know, Absolutely. making sure that we're doing things the right way because you never know who's following you. Somebody's always looking up to you. Absolutely. You know? And people, we always tell myself this. There's somebody waiting on me. There's somebody that needs me. And if I never show up, mm. what have I just done to the people behind me? Right, right. What have I done to the people behind me? So you got a few comments. Lakeisha from Arkansas is saying hello. Oh, girl. Yes. She <laughs> said she's a very good person. She helped me get started on my health and wellness journey. I'm forever grateful. I love her for being there for me when I was depressed. So see? Lakeisha is amazing. Lakeisha yes. is so amazing. She has tremendously, tremendous makeover. And I and I'm and I'm excited to see. You know, more. I'm excited to see more because she's still going. She's still. I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of her. Amen. So, sis, take take me to this. Now, I know that you're divorced now, but Mm -hmm. as a spouse, as a married woman, okay, what did it look like to you? And I know you kind of said it, but you didn't go into it. But I want to know what did it look or feel like for you to ignore your depression? Honestly, I don't even think I even realized I was ignoring it. Mm-hmm. I think I, I'm, I'm not, I don't like to play the victim. Right. And I hate asking for help. You know what I mean? And so I think I, I, I'm being dead serious. And I think I just, 
I just I just try to find ways to put a band-aid on it and just be like, go on somewhere, like stop, leave me alone. You know what I mean? And so I just stayed, I think that's why I just stayed busy because I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. So yes. I mean, when I say I was a full-time track coach, I was full-time in, in the, the military sorority, I was a full-time student doing my master's degree, and I worked a full-time job. And I was a full-time wife. <laughs> As my husband, I did not drop a beat. I did not drop a beat. And I stayed busy until one day he found me on the floor and I was just sitting there crying. And he was like, what's wrong with you? I was like, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. It was just so much. I had overwhelmed myself so much because I because I was just trying to feel, you know what I mean? Just trying to fill a hole. And it was like a never ending hole that I just kept trying to fill up. And yeah. Well, I got to tell you this. Um, back in 2007, I attempted to commit suicide. Mm. I was mentioned a bout of depression like none other. I just had lost my first set of twin babies, and I was just going through it. You know, I was not married yet. And um, I just wanted to give up, throw the towel in and just quit, right? Lay down and die. Mm. But something yeah. rose up inside of me. And I decided to choose life more yes. and choose to live. You have to. And it took me back to a day that I was shot at point blank range. Um, all the bullets missed me. And it took me back to think, why did God save me that day back in 2001? Mm -hmm. God saved me in 2001 just for me to kill myself in 2007? Mm -hmm. Nah, I don't think that's how it works. Right, right. That's how it works. So I went through a series of, of therapy sessions, a series of um, trying to figure myself out. But I was a soldier. I mm -hmm. knew that I was a soldier. I knew that I was a good soldier. I knew that I was a leader. I knew that I was a good leader. But there was this broken little girl inside that lost her father at age 13 who was searching for her father and men, you know, searching for the things her father did for her in a man. Searching mm -hmm. for that fatherly love in a man mm -hmm. that I wanted to be my man, you know, searching for love, like they say, in all the wrong places, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know what depression feels like, mm -hmm. I know exactly what it looks it's like. Hard. It's it hard, it's like it is exactly hard. And I thank God that although I've been going through a hard season over the last three years of my life and I continue to go through it, there's always something that, that's yeah, happening. Will be. Yeah. I am gifted and, and I thank God that I'm able to handle mm -hmm. what's in my life now. Absolutely. I'm not giving up, I'm not folding, mm -hmm. but I reach out to the powers to be that can help me along my journey. That's all you can do. Whether it's a counselor, whether it's a mentor, whether it's a pastor, whether it's you know, my family, I get the help that I need. Now, I have no fear about getting help. Right. Then it was like taboo, you know. Oh, you don't need no help. What you going to get help for? You don't need to talk to nobody. Just come on over here and drink this drink with me. You mm -hmm. know, come on yeah. over here and, and, you know, let's just chill out, hang out. And yeah. then figure out that you wake up the next day and you still got the same problems. Mm -hmm. Right. Still got the same problems and you didn't cure them. Right. But now I am focused on being a success. Success. And there's nothing that that's gonna stop me this time around. Mm -hmm. I'm not holding, I'm not bending. I have a network set up to help me to succeed. You know, although I'm going through things just like it says in psalms 23 yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death that's just what it is it's a shadow and a shadow cannot harm you a right. shadow can kill you mm -hmm. so yea though you walk through it and it says you walk through so if it says you walk through guess what that means god is holding your hand and he's walking you through his mm -hmm. rod and staff is there to comfort you mm -hmm. god's word does not lie and it, it never returns void mm -hmm. so if we indulge in the word seek the word read the word listen to the word and understand the word of god it will save our life because gotcha. it absolutely saved my life and i got to tell you it's one of the things that absolutely saved my life absolutely. i've been a christian since i've been born but i didn't know god until three years ago 
Mm. I developed a personal relationship with the Lord three years ago. As I was in Augusta, Georgia, I developed a relationship that cannot be severed with mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. He took me through a season of being alone on purpose, just yes. for such a time as this, to create the woman that you see before you. Right. And that's why I say that I'm not going through things. I go through things all the time. There's something happening. But there's something about the word of God that helps you fight those battles. Because right. says the battle isn't yours, it's his, right? Right, right. So, so now I have a different perspective on the things that I face, the depression that I face, the things that I may go through, the things that may rise up against me. There's a different path that I've chosen to take. And I right. see you've done the same thing. Well, so, it's, 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 I think what people gotta have to understand is everybody's everybody's interpretation of who God is yes. is their own. But what happens is they kind of created a definition you know what i mean they've kind of you know what i mean this is who god is and you know and i was having a conversation with somebody about this earlier is they've made it to where god is almost like a human you know what i mean like he's unforgiving like they are and and so that's what runs us from the church that's what that's what runs us from the cross and so like i said when, when i when i got to the point to where i started learning and knowing God for myself I got to a point to where I had to I had to realize he is not like man he is not like man at all I'm sorry somebody is at my front door give me just one second okay well I just want to let you all know that you are listening to the encourage yourself series my name is Chandra Nicole Gore and I am a lens of faith today I'm interviewing my sister uh, Natasha Houston um, her as a soror back in Arkansas some time ago and have always been connected with her. Thanking God that he's doing things in her life, doing things in my life, and to God be the glory. We're going to keep pushing forward and we're going to continue to encourage one another. You can reach me at www.lensoffaith.org. That is my website, www.lensoffaith.org. And I thank you all for joining us on the live line. Please like, share, and follow. Absolutely. Natasha is back. Sorry about that. That was that was odd. <laughs> I didn't know if that was important, if that was an emergency or what. But anyway, um, that once I got to learn that, because I think that's that is what kind of detrit me from the church was. God is mad at me. You know what I mean? I had a I joined the military and I became a wild child, honey. And, I, and it was just like, you know, God is mad at me. And I, I and the more you do, you feel like you're getting further and further and further and further and further to the point to where you feel like there is no coming back. And so, you know, three years ago when I when I, you know, repaired my relationship with Christ is when I got to know him for myself. And I started real, I learned for myself. He don't he, he's been waiting for you this whole time. You know, he never went nowhere. And he's been with you the entire time. And, you know, all you have to do is ask for forgiveness and it's done. You know, and, and that no matter what he don't he does not see you detach everybody else's eyes off. Like God don't see you the same way other people do. That even when you offend him, you you make him angry, you hurt him, you do anything. He ain't going. No, he got you 10 toes down like for real. And so. Once I once I got that and I understood that, then I was able to continue my my journey. You know what I mean? Knowing that no matter what, the man is next to me. He's always with me. And the more that, the more that I, the more that I made sure that I connected with him, I started actually hearing him talk. Yes. The first time I ever heard him talking to me, and I was just like, "Is he? Is, am I being punked? You know what I mean? It was a Lost. It was the first time that I started Natasha. hearing his voice and say it again. I don't see her anymore. Natasha, if you can hear me, just log out and log back in. Uh-oh. I can hear you and see you. Um, okay. While we're attempting to um, get Natasha back on the line, I want to share a couple of scriptures with you all um, about encouraging yourself, you know, Oftentimes we face battles and we feel all alone, like there's no one, there's no one, but there's God. God is there with you. God is there with you. So the first one I want to share with you is Deuteronomy 31 and 8. It says, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. When I think about that, all the times I felt alone, the Lord was with me. The Lord was with me. You back, Natasha? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
All right. Can you see me? Now I can. Yep. Okay. okay. Yep. Let me ask you this. Um, there's a part in your testimony where you said that you hit rock bottom, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. That was back in 2016. Tell the listening audience what did hitting rock bottom do to you physically and mentally? Hmm. Um, I felt heavy. heavy. <laughs> I felt, um, I felt like I was like 500 pounds. Uh, getting out to bed was impossible. Um, like when I say heavy like that, I mean heavy like that. Like, and I'm not over exaggerating. That's exactly what that feels like. Yes. Um, it, it felt like literally. And so even when I would try to roll over, if I rolled over, I rolled over and it's just, you know what I mean? I'm crouching into a ball, but you know, trying to get up. If I sat up, if I had, I mean, when I had to pee, I, I, I it was, you know, a struggle getting up to go use the bathroom. Like that's how bad it was. Um, I didn't want to get out of the bed. I didn't want to do anything. Um, I just, I just stayed in bed. And and like I said, and in that moment, th those were when I was having those thoughts about, you know, me and God were having conversations and I was just like, I don't want to be here no more. Like I'm tired. I don't want to, I don't want to suffer no more. I'm tired of not seeing happy days. I'm tired of being like, I'm, I'm tired. You know, at, at that point, um, I started having back to back clinic attacks and, you know, in and out of the hospital. So that it was just a whirlwind of that. And I think when I realized that I didn't want to, um, when I realized I didn't want to die, um, is when I started realizing that, okay, well, then I got to figure this out. You know what I mean? Because if he, if, if he was to take my life right now, you know what I mean? I'd probably be like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. You know what I mean? Like, so, so clearly I just, I, I was just really, really exhausted and I just needed to find something. And so, um, you know, when people say that they're not motivated or they feel depressed, really what they're saying is they don't have anything to hold on to that gives them drive for life. And so you have to find drive for life. And so once that, like I said, getting into the gym and just getting into me, trying to figure out who I am, trying to figure out, you know what I mean? What he wants from me. Like I, I was so intentional about that because I knew, I knew, I knew that if I did not figure out what God wanted from me, I was going to end up right back in the same spot. I was going to end up right back in the same spot. And you know what? God is so intentional. He, he sets us up to show us what our gifts are. And yes. oftentimes we walk right past it because yeah. we feel like that's a cup. I, I ain't going to do that. That's mm -hmm. not what I'm, that's not what I'm good at. Right. Because you're living in the moment. And mm -hmm. in my moment, it was being a soldier. You know, I was a great soldier, mm -hmm. but God was showing me little tidbits of things, bringing people to me saying, Hey, you got a calling on your life. I'm looking at them like, what calling? I, yeah. What are you talking about? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. I think you're the wrong person. But no, they were serious. God was sending people, sending me signs mm -hmm. that I needed to change my course. But I was on this course saying, I'm going to make Sergeant Major. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. This is what I'm going to do. I'm retired 20 years. And all of a sudden, there was a shift in the atmosphere. Mm. And lo and behold, I'm walking in my purpose and I feel absolutely amazing about it. I feel great. I have a sense of waking up in the morning saying, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah. I know exactly who I need to impact. I know exactly what, where I need to be, who I need to be engaged with and, and who my target audience is. And, and thank you, God. Thank you, God. Waking up every morning now, thanking God. Thank you, God, for waking me up today. Because yeah. I know I got purpose inside of me. I'm excited now to wake up every morning. Absolutely. There's a time in my life where I'm like, okay, I'm just getting up because I got to get up, right? Yeah. No, now there's a different feeling to this. Absolutely. There's Absolutely. a different feeling to this because now we're walking in our authentic purposes mm -hmm. instead of a purpose we plan to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and and and, it, and it'll really cause you to shift self. Um, because I used to be a people pleaser. I used to be um, where I needed social acceptance. Yeah. I needed, you know what I mean. And now I'm just like everybody, get out, leave me alone. You know what I mean. I, I intentionally moved to Apollo Beach, way yeah. outside of Tampa, to to keep the noise out because I like being in my space. I like being able to meditate. I like being able to just think. I like being able to, to focus on. You know my career goals. What 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 needs to happen tomorrow? And I just want to be. I don't want no distraction from that. You know what I mean. So 
I just like being in my house and being in my space and just being able to hear God when it's time. You yes. know what I mean? And so, um, so Wanda yeah. says that God revealed her purpose to her when she was in her childhood. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people have told me that, right, that they mm -hmm. get a sign even as a child. So so what is it that we do? Um, Tijuana, if you could type in there, did you start walking in your purpose in your childhood or did you let some time go? And then you jumped into your purpose as an adult. Write that in the comments for me, because I love to know what your answer is. But Natasha, I want you to tell the listening audience the most impactful point of your journey thus far. That question is so difficult. Um, I will say right now, right this, now. this season, right now, um, is the first time it, because, like I said, me and God reconnected. I, I didn't. I feel like I just met God two years ago. You know what I'm saying? Girl, let me tell you. Although, although I've been, I, I, I got saved at my grandmother's on the line. Mama, when did I get saved? <laughs> I think I was like eight, eight or nine when I got saved, and I was 14 when I got baptized. Um, and so, uh, like I said, I just met Christ a couple years ago, and. For the first time, I actually stepped out on faith. Come on. And left Arkansas. Come on. And I had no idea how I was going to get here. Um, no money saved up, no nothing. All I know was I, I move, move. And I'm like, God, whatever. If you're if you're telling me to move, then just just you know. Let the stars align and tell me what you want me to do and where am I going? And all of a sudden, because I was so open, yes. because I was so open, I kind of just opened myself up and said, God, I don't want to drive. I don't want to drive anymore. You are the driver of my life. I'm going to sit in the passenger seat. I'm not going to force nothing. I'm not going to relationships, friendships, nothing. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you handle this. And so, you know, I, I'm just like, I, you know, if I can't hear or whatever the case may be, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go detox. I'm going to go make sure that I, you know, purify my body just so I can hear him more because I'm trying to find answers. Um, and so my best friend called me and we had a knee deep conversation. And it was just funny that when she said what she said, I had just asked God, what, what was he wanting me to do? And she was like, why don't you come to Tampa? And I was like, I just asked him. You know, yes. I'm so excited. I'm sorry, everybody, but I'm just saying. I had just asked him like a couple of days before then. What did he want? Where do you want me to go? And so for her to call me and be intentional about that specific, not Pacific, specific question, and she said, "Why don't you just come to Tampa?" And I was just like. What? Hold on, let me verify that that's what he want me to do. You know what I'm saying? And so I prayed about it, and more things came and just validated. You know, it just started lining up. And so I said, "All right, God, now if this ain't what's supposed to happen, I need you to I need you to throw a monkey wrench in this for real." Wave your hand or something. Wave your hand or something because the thing is, is once I see vision, once I see vision, yeah. I yeah. see the green light, I see the yellow brick road, I'm gone. My track shoes is on. I'm out. God gives us the vision. So right behind yes. that, he gives us the provision. Absolutely. Whatever it is he tells us to do, he has a plan for us to accomplish it. He's yeah. not going to give it to you without showing you how it's going to get done. Yeah. We can see Wanda's uh, answer here. She says, as I was walking in my purpose is when God showed me that my purpose had been with me. But because I didn't know myself and I didn't have a personal relationship with God and I was paying attention I wasn't paying attention and I didn't see it mm -hmm. yet. As a matter of fact, I think that's happening to a lot of us these days. Yes. That's yes. happening to a lot of us these days. We don't pay attention to the, to the signs and, and wonders that's happening around us because we're, we're just oblivious to it. And we're just walking, walking along, doing our own thing. Like, Oh, okay. I must continue on being miserable, but we don't even know we plotting our own misery. But if, you pay, but if you pay attention to everything that all of us just said, when we got to know, or when, we, when we were on a journey to find self, yes, is when we found God, and when we found self and God is when we found purpose. Amen. Amen. You know what I mean? Just for the sake of time, since we're kind of running out of time here, but mm -hmm. I, I want to know, what did you learn from that very point that you decided to walk by faith? When I, don't battle. Come on now. 
Don't doubt him. Don't doubt him and don't ask questions. Don't doubt him and don't ask questions because I, I mean, I'm not going to sit up here and say I wasn't scared. I wasn't like that. Did Tampa? T Tampa? Like, I'm, I, I ain't got no family down here. You know what I mean? And I'm like, Tampa. Okay. Okay. You know, because any other time that I had moved around, I was with my mama. We moved around a lot, number one. Number two, another time that I moved around a lot, I was with the military. So no matter what, it was always resources. I ain't got to do nothing. All I got to do is just get in the car and move, get on the plane and fly and get to my next destination. But this time it was just me. So if I'm not being obedient or I'm not listening to God, imagine what kind of type of drowning I'm going to be doing. You know what I mean? Because I'm not being obedient. So I'm, I'm terrified. I'm terrified. I bought a house in Arkansas. I have a home there. And I walked away from it to come and follow purpose. Amen. And I'm like, man, if they, if they, if they, if they, don't, don't doubt them. Don't, don't doubt them. So, so then, I need you to, for the sake of time, I need you to give me three powerful words of encouragement. Oh, man. See, I'm not, I, ain't good, I ain't good with the quick on your feet thing. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right. Three three words of encouragement. Um, Develop self-love if you don't already have it. Develop self-love if you don't already have it. And I say that because once you develop uh, self-love, you start developing practices that make you stay in line with that. And so, you know... You, relationships if people are being toxic and in your environment then you are sabotaging your space your energy your happiness and things like that and when you love yourself enough you you're, you're gonna keep that out of space you know what i mean so definitely definitely develop self-love if you don't already have it or even even if you think you have it and maybe you know you've allowed some things to get in the way Get, get to detoxing, get to cutting some things out, cutting some folks off. And you don't even have to cut folks off. Just maybe push them at a distance a little bit. You know what I mean? Just so you can keep your space clear, clear, clean. And you know what I mean? And positive. Um, let me see. What else? Uh, I, want, I want you to tell the listening audience um, about Junkyard Fitness. How did you develop that? What encouraged you to start Junkyard Fitness? My journey. Um so I had to learn how to, how can I say this? So it, it's not Junkyard Fitness anymore, but Junkyard Fitness started because I found Junkyards to purge. I wrote a book. That, that's what, honestly, that's what started everything. When I started, you know, reconnecting with Christ and everything, I became proactive by, um, by writing my book, my first book, which, what was the title of my first book? Bring Back the Village. <laughs> So my first book was Bring Back the Village and I was telling my story. So as I was telling my story, what started happening is everything came to surface. And I called my grandmother because I had my first panic attack. And my grandmother said, you know, you're used to being in control. You're used to always trying to have control over your life. And so what happens is, is when you don't have control, you panic. And what's happening is, is while you're reading this book, everything is coming to surface. Because when you write a book, you gotta be detailed. And when you're being detailed, that means you have to remember everything that happened in certain scenarios. So we're talking about molestation. I'm talking about, and I was being detailed when I was explaining that. We're talking about domestic violence and I had to be, you know what I mean? So as I'm doing this, I'm reliving. And next thing you know, I couldn't breathe. My palms started getting sweaty and everything. So that's kind of what started everything. And I had to figure out how to drop that off. You know, as everything was coming up, what do I do when I start getting fearful? Figure out, how to, figure out how to turn that around. What do I do when I start getting depressed? Figure out how to turn that around. I don't let negative emotions fester. I, I don't. And, and, and sometimes I'm not going to lie. Sometimes they fester for maybe a day, but they, they never fester for longer than that. You know what I mean? I always try to find a way to get out of it, get busy, find something to do. Um, but I've developed my own junkyards. I developed my own junkyards to drop that stuff off at. So the church is my junkyard, you know, going on Sundays and Wednesdays, you know, Wednesday night Bible studies and just allowing, you know, encouraging words from the pastor, allowing, you know, um, wh whatever you know, church does for you. But what it did for me was it just got motivation and empowerment and things like that. So it kept me positive. 
I want to thank everyone for joining the live line with us today. Thank you so much for joining the Encourage Yourself series. Today, I interviewed Natasha Houston, who's a certified personal trainer and wellness coach. Thank you so much, Natasha, for joining us on the live line today. I want to let you all know how to reach me. You can reach me at www.lensoffaith.org. One more time, that's www.lensoffaith.org. I'm on every social media platform. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Tumblr, and YouTube. Please connect with me now. I am also the CEO and founder of the Discovering You Coaching Program. So if you ever need a coach, I am your motivational coach, leadership strategist, and destiny catalyst. Thank you all for joining me today. God bless you all and have a great rest of your day. All right, Natasha, let's get back to the show. Um, I stopped you as as I had to um, let the radio okay. part of it in. That's but, okay. Uh, I want to get back to these questions, though, because um, we are still live. We are still okay. live in Facebook okay. world. Uh, thank you, Tawana. Thank you. Thank you. But I, I want to get into um, your, your certified personal training aspect because you're doing a lot as wellness coach, a personal trainer, um, doing a lot of healthy things. I want you to talk to the listening audience about the, the change and the shift in um, your your healthy eating now, as well as the, the personal training aspect of it. So talk to that point for a little bit for us. OK, okay. so. Um, all right, shifting, 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 shifting. <laughs> I was stuck on the book. Shifting. Okay, so the nutrition. So, okay, um, in 2017, 18, 18. So, like January, February time frame of um of 20, 2018, I had a my potassium had crashed. Um, iron dropped extremely low, and I blacked out in my bedroom. And in a <clears throat> I blacked out so bad the TV fell. I think I grabbed the TV on the way down and it fell on and it hit me in the head real hard. So I had a horrible migraine all day, probably a concussion and didn't even know it. But um, it, it scared me because I had never blacked out before in my life. And so I asked the big question, how is it that I, I, I've made such a major adjustment in my health and that I'm at a healthy weight, but I'm still sickly? <laughs> You know what I mean? My vitamin levels are not where they need to be, and I'm still tired. I'm struggling with depression. What's going on? So I had to. Um, so I just asked. I, I was just curious about that, and so I prayed and I asked God to, to reveal some answers to me because, you know, I had also been doing research, and, and there's a lot of health gurus that are. I'm talking about made millions off of fortune of selling, you know, nutrition plans and things like that that died from illnesses and sicknesses that nutrition is supposed to heal, and I'm like. How was I, you know, I, I just asked a lot of questions. And so as I, as I asked the questions, I connected with some friends of mine, Soraya and Darnell, who um, had been following Dr. Sabian. So they brought Dr. Sabian, they brought Dr. Sabian into my world. And they were just like, you know, they had been struggling with some things. And when they took on the diet, it reversed it. You know what I mean? And they, and they I'm talking about glowing, looking beautiful, looking happy. Um, you know, just, just, it had done a lot of wonders for them. And I was just like, what did you guys do? And they was like, you know, well, here, they sent me all these videos and I'm like, who is Dr. Saby? Now, Dr. Saby, he's, you know, got this African accent, accent and he got two hour, three hour videos. And I'm like, okay, listen, I know I, everybody know I got ADHD. I can't sit still and listen to this. You know what I mean? So I didn't think I could make it, but the information, because I was hungry for knowledge, yeah. the information just pulled me in and pulled me in and pulled me in. So I tried it. Mm. I tried it. Um, I, I started the diet. Took I did. Uh, I made it to day ten, and that's why I tell people, you know, I I I, I get I try to get them on it to try it to feel better, to drop weight and things. And it is probably one of the most difficult diets to do. It is one is one of the most difficult things to try because it's so limited on the certain type of foods that you can eat. But by day five, by day five, my energy was through the roof. I needed Ritalin. I needed Ritalin. I mean, I was brushing my teeth and dancing in the mirror 
And I could not be still. I was training clients and I was bouncing in, in space. I had so much energy. I had cleaned my house, cleaned my gym, cleaned my car, did my work, caught up with all my clients. I'm talking about I did so much, gave my dogs baths, cooked dinner. I did so much. And I was still, you know what I mean? Like, what are we doing tomorrow? Right. What are we doing tomorrow to take over the world? Like, I was just so, I could think clearly. It was almost like my brain had came out and everything was just in front of me. I had so much clarity. I felt amazing. But isn't, the, isn't that um, a great feeling, though? Because I, when I had started fasting and, and praying and meditating, mm -hmm. I got so much clarity. Yeah. Ooh. On, my, on my journey. Yeah. I'm telling you, for three years, I went all in and I, I fasted and prayed all the time. Yeah, constantly on a Daniel fast. Sometimes I would just do liquid only, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just water. Mm -hmm. I'm fasting and praying and fasting and praying, and I felt so much better. Yeah, so much better. Well, and and the reason why is because it it feed, it feeds the organs. Your yeah. organs are what makes everything function. It makes the blood flow. It makes the brain wake up. Um, and so the way that that particular diet does is it feeds everything. So yeah. I get it, you know, every, to each his own with whatever it is that you're doing. But yeah. to God, what God put on this earth for us is alkaline. That that is what He gave us. Everything else is a man-made diet. Everything else. So I'm not trying to, you know, get into hard down knockout arguments and debates and stuff with everybody about what what's better and whatever the case. You do what you want to do, but I know what God has put in place, and it's the alkaline. It, it's alkalinity, and the reason why. I need to get you on one day. Let me write this down while you're talking about it, because I want to do a wellness session mm -hmm. so, and, and it's going to be a panel actually with mm -hmm. you and uh, three other people. So I want to mm -hmm. get that down in my, in my uh, schedule. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing, but the thing about it is, is, is it feeds the body. It feeds the body on all level. levels all levels and so it's, it's getting your blood moving as fast as it can and you know the faster your blood is going the, the quicker your brain is firing up that's the goal that's the goal how can i get my organs to operate at its most efficient your organs that means every last one of your organs and absolutely feeds that yes well sis i need you to tell everybody um what else do you have out there let's talk about the books where can we purchase the books and what's the name of the books okay so um the first book is that ain't for sale no more. <laughs> but the uh, um, "To Heal at a Junkyard Near You" is on Amazon. What's the name of it? "To Heal at a Junkyard Near You," and that's on Amazon. And then my workbook um, is on my website, which is borntolivefree.net. And what the workbook does is as soon as you order it, you get an order of herbs in the mail. You have um, you get nutritional guidance. There's lots of fitness tips. There's a workout guide. There's a daily devotional um, and, and there's a tracking for the entire 21 days that you're, you're doing that workbook. Um, and it's, it's, it's Dr. Sadie led. Um, so those those are just the two, the two uh, resources I have right now. Tell us about your sessions. How can everyone contact you? or um, partake in whatever it is that you have to offer. Let If you have an offer, let us know what that is as well. So right now, um, my biggest thing right now is the One Pound Club. Um, and the reason why I'm in love with the One Pound Club is that it, it gives everybody the opportunity to get a taste. You know what I mean? For 10 days, for 21 days. Um, I have some people doing 40 days, 50 days of what alkaline living is all about. Um, they're learning why being alkaline is important. Um, and so the goal... The goal, sorry, the goal in this, the, the, the entire goal in this is to dispose and decrease, which means I want folks to start ridding medication out of their cabinets, number one. Number two, feeding fertility, which is a big thing for me because I struggle with fertility. Um, feeding fertility, alkal alkalinity reverses, you know, it sh the, the, the herb, especially the herbs that I have, they shrink tumors. Um, it, it lessens the, the period cycle. You have to do this for a while. You know what I mean? To get your cycle regulated and everything. Um, we talk about natural products. You know what I mean? Not getting rid of the toxic products, 
getting off the vinyl underwear, doing cotton, cotton everything, cotton, cotton pads, cotton tampons, cotton panties, cotton thongs, whatever the case may be, but just making sure that everything is cotton and natural. Um, all that stuff will cut the period cycle down. It'll get rid of the tumors and everything and just start feeding fertility for women that are struggling with pregnancy and periods and stuff like that. All that stuff can be reversed. It's just a matter of your nutrition and your own care. Um, and then last but not least, but reversing um, unhealthy families. A lot of times adults and everybody, please, you know, be honest with yourself. When you guys get on these weight loss journeys, you think of yourself, but you still feed your kids this nasty stuff. And and, and so feeding unhealthy, I mean, um, reversing unhealthy families. When you when you decide to get healthy, you need to decide to get your house healthy because your kids are going to start struggling with infertility. Your kids are going to start struggling with more, you know, ADHD, um, uh, uh, you know, health issues, mental health issues, depression, anxiety, and things like that, because all that stuff comes from the food that we eat. So in order for your kids to have increased quality of life, when you take on healthy, your kids need to take on healthy too. So, so, so um, that's the goal of my one pound club is educating all of that, getting fruits and veggies back in the household, getting fruits and veggies back in the body, and just teaching people how to be intentional about living and having good quality of life. Mm. Amen to that. Well, I thank you so much for that, sis. That was a lot of knowledge right there. And you know, I remember something, um, Dr. Nicholson, she was a herbologist back in when I was a teenager in high school. She said, we are what we eat. Yep, that's true. <laughs> she that said, is true. that in my mind. We are what we eat. And I still ate whatever I wanted. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I didn't right. get it back then. I didn't yeah. get it back then. Mm -hmm. I totally didn't get it because I love to eat. I am a food connoisseur and I always told myself, I want to travel the world and eat. I want to travel the world and eat. That's all I wanted to do. Hey, food is an amazing thing. I'm not even going to deny that. I'll be honest. Food is an amazing thing. <laughs> well, I thank you, my sister, for joining me on this live line. I thank you for the invitation. Yes, you gave me a plethora of information and form audience i thank you so much this will go out to um the radio all nations radio saturday at 5 p.m eastern standard time and it will go out globally around the world on the radio show um besides that you can catch it catch the replay on youtube instagram twitter linkedin tumblr google blog it, it'll be everywhere thank um, you so much you can always replay download the version this version of the episode if you um, want it. And I'll also share the link um, on YouTube with you as well. Well, I just want to wrap up the show and I want to tell you all God bless you and thank you all for tuning in. I'd like to read to you uh, Galatians, not Galatians. I'd like to read to you a small scripture, a small story that I got from Our Daily Bread, which is something that I subscribe to. And Galatians 3.27 tells us that all of you were baptized in Christ, have clothed yourself in Christ, clothed yourselves with Christ. So one of the earliest uh, childhood memories of church was a pastor walking down the aisle, challenging us to remember the waters of baptism. Remember the waters. Remember the waters. Try to drill it in this this person's head. And this, by the way, this is a story from Peter Chin. I don't want to take um, take on this story. But this is not my story. This is a story by Peter Chin. And he proceeded to splash everyone with the water, which as a young child, both delighted and confused. He said, why should we think about baptism when a person is baptized? There's so much more to do than water. So much more than water. Baptism. Baptism symbolizes how through faith in Jesus, we've become clothed with, with the Lord, just as it says in Galatians 3 and 27. Well, I ask you all, are you clothed with the Lord? It took me some time to figure it all out, years and years of doing things my way, doing things how I wanted to do them. And I didn't get great results. I was able to navigate life, but I didn't get the best results. Now I'm actually walking in my authentic purpose. And I thank God for showing me that. He took me through a breaking, uh, seasons of crying, seasons of depression, seasons of anger, seasons that I did not want. 
but God took me through those seasons to show me who he really was. Mm -hmm. There were times that I laid out prostrate before the Lord asking God, why did you send me to Augusta by myself? Why did you send me here all alone? Why, why, why? Laying out and slowly but surely God started revealing to me Lens of Faith Speaks. Lens of Faith Photography, Lens of Faith Platform was birthed being on the floor in my prayer closet, crying out to the Lord, laying prostrate before him. Had I not done that, I probably wouldn't have my master's degree either because he also showed me that he wanted me to complete a task. And I did not want to go back to school at all. But <laughs> I, am, I, I eventually went back. So I say this to you all. Learn God for yourselves. Get to Absolutely. know for you develop an intimate personal relationship with god that no one can sever that is exactly what i did i was intentional about my journey seeking out the lord not who everyone wanted him to be for me but who he is to me authentically and he he talks with me he walks with me he pats me on the back he gives me a high five and all of that letting me know that i am walking in the direction that he wanted me to go and and if i'm not going the right way i feel a tugging a pulling saying uh uh i didn't tell you to do that he'll correct me he'll check me in a minute so i just ask you all to find some time to develop a spiritual relationship with the lord for you that only you have the keys to and god mm -hmm. the drive and let him drive you god bless you all and have a great rest of your night natasha stay right there sis. all right